Welcome back. Jesse and Irina Kaufman here. And we love each other dearly. And it's for real. <laughs> so, ladies, are you waiting for a Moses to come and rescue you? Or, men, are you needing to become and be a Moses to take the initiative, take responsibility, rise mm -hmm. up, and move forward? Oh, okay. This topic is one that really had me fired up. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, I had this revelation and understanding of how it's so <clears> common <throat> for us to look for a type of rescue or a type of freedom that we get through somebody else leading us there, taking mm -hmm. us there. Mm -hmm. And it, it, if we're not taking the initiative to move in that direction ourselves, we look for external circumstances or other people to take us there. Mm -hmm. And it applies to both men and women, but the, 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 insofar as how it relates to the women is especially fascinating because women by design like to be chosen by a man. And the women and the men need to have the confidence to go choose one and to pursue them yes. or one that is. And so like as the children of Israel, were in the land of Egypt. They were waiting for a Moses, a savior to lead them out of Egypt mm -hmm. based upon an ancient prophecy. However, any one of them could have risen up to the same capacity of obedience, obedience that Moses himself did. Moses at any one point could have said, nope, I'm not doing that. God would have just like, okay, next. Mm -hmm. I have to raise up a Moses from elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And so we recognize that we all have the same capacity to be as obedient as the greatest man who ever walked on the earth. Mm -hmm. And so the children of Israel, they finally had their Moses who led them out of Egypt. Well, guess what? He was their leader, kind mm -hmm. of their, a type of savior. Yeah. And so they came out with that same mindset of rescue me, help. Mm -hmm. I'm helpless. And that produced a lot of complaining and grumbling and not taking responsibility. And that yeah. caused all sorts of chaos, as you know, if you read the Bible, mm -hmm. where the Lord became very angry with them at times. And plagues came upon them where the enemy just came in and took and just cleaned house because of the doors they were opening to for him to come in and and uh, bring to pass what they were complaining about. Mm -hmm. And then even when they came into the land of Egypt, uh, out of, into the land of Canaan, guess what? After things were going well, what happened? They fell into idolatry. Mm -hmm. And there in the place of freedom was revealed what was deep in their heart. Even after multiple generations, mm -hmm. things get passed on by you know, monkey see, monkey do. Father, son. The son does what the father does. You yeah. Know? So it's passed on through, you know, having seen dad do it. So I do it too, you know, mm -hmm. unless we break that cycle. And so we recognize that idolatry was in their heart in Egypt. And they came out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. But then once they came to the land of Canaan, they had, we, God had to get Egypt out of them. <clears throat> yeah. And so likewise for the ladies especially but i'm going to bring it home for the men too mm -hmm. and i will also want Edina to speak to the women more you know from heart to heart here too but i'm just going to deliver the concept so ladies if you're looking for a man to lead you out of bondage or lead you to freedom or to rescue you out of mm -hmm. a situation that's undesirable whether it's a, a restrictive religious environment or whether it's an unfulfilled life of a job that you hate or singlehood. Or singlehood. If you are looking for a man to rescue you from a less than desirable situation in life, mm -hmm. it's actually at best a borderline idolatry of seeing a man, a husband, as your savior instead of taking responsibility and taking the initiative to start defining your dreams and goals and desires mm -hmm. and in doing so you tap into and discover what god put there already yeah. and when you don't pursue what god put inside you mm -hmm. it becomes very frustrating and depressing mm -hmm. in your life mm -hmm. because you know that you're not achieving and reaching what you know you could deep down 
it's just the path towards it looks so hard and just like mm -hmm. just just drudge this, this i i can't i can't do that alone that's too hard yeah i need a husband to lead me out of that and help me and well, i'm not saying that's not true because uh you know you get two oxen yoked up they can pull a much heavier load that's mm -hmm. true at the same time if you do it at the expense of of taking responsibility for creating and designing your life like god uh, showed you and gave a template for you to do in his word we can ask him for wisdom to make wise decisions and then move forward in faith and allowing him to guide those steps as you move forward in faith. It's not being presumptuous and just doing things your way and living it up. I'm going to do what I want. No, 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 no. That's not mm -hmm. what I'm saying. <laughs> so anyhow, so for the men, this would then apply to rising up and do the same take initiative for your life if you're if you're looking at marriage or having a wife as somehow the ticket to you know escape this addiction mm -hmm. it's the same mindset mm -hmm. it's not going to happen uh if you enter marriage with with a mindset of like marriage will take me out of my egypt mm -hmm. guess what's going to happen if you enter marriage with that mindset you now we're going to have to get egypt out of you in marriage and that's what produces divorce chaos and all sorts of drama mm -hmm. so by you taking the initiative, moving forward ahead of time, getting the Egypt out of your heart before yeah. you enter into marriage, yeah, that will produce the true freedom that you desire. Mm -hmm. So when we take it back to Moses for the ladies, I'm going to speak to the ladies now. When children of, uh, of Israel, God's children, we're looking up to Moses as their rescuer, their God in a way. They would come, if anything happens, if they have some complaints or, you know, they were uh, dissatisfied, they would bring those complaints, complaints to him instead of to God. So they had, I guess, a mixed up relationship there or understanding of who their rescuer is and so when we do that in real life you know we see a handsome man and we get so crazy for him butterflies imagination going we're already creating the whole life around this man in our imagination I've done it so I'm, I was used to be a master at that. Oh my goodness. I was married to one man in my imagination and he had no idea. You know, what we do is that we create the idol and then we do not see him for who he is. We just focus on our imagination and that's what Israel did with Moses. He would say, come with me to the mountain so that you can meet your God. And they said, no, it's too much for us. We want you to do it for us. So what I would call you to do is that don't rely on your butterfly feelings. Don't rely on your emotions and your you know, feelings for a guy that he is attractive or you feel like, oh my gosh, this is it. Because that's actually going to lead you a wrong way. But if you rely on, well, first define what you want. And so the marriage is actually a partnership. It's not just one person leading another. Because then it's not going to be um, a partnership. It's going to be more dictatorship, right? And that's what children of Israel wanted. Mm -hmm. They're like... Give us a king. We want a king. They wanted to have somebody, somebody else. Somebody else that takes responsibility on themselves and not the children of Israel. So that's our responsibility. Our responsibility is to define what we want. We take action. We choose our partner for life. And choosing is because if you know your mission and vision in life or for life, Choosing that partner who already has that defined as well. And aligning it 
is going to get you more fulfilled as a person and in, in marriage. You're going to be yoked together and walking further together than by yourself because of that. And then the person, his character will reveal his beauty mm -hmm. and you become more attractive to that person as a person. So don't judge a book by its cover. Open the book. Get to know that person. What are they about? And don't get attached to it either, you know, because you know how when you read romances, mm -hmm. we get into this whole imaginary world and you imagine yourself being in it too, right? So that's what we do. As women, we have this great imagination, which is beautiful, but let's put it to use in a different way. You know, we don't have to create an idol out of a man. We can actually detach those feelings and focus on the partnership and getting to know a person. And then when you choose that person, those feelings will come back and they will be even beautiful and stronger. And it will take you longer or, you know, for the rest of your life to be with that person mm -hmm. and love them because you chose them for their character, for their person. And I would say uh, King Ahab, who had Jezebel as his wife, mm -hmm. was a prime example of making mm -hmm. an idol out of his spouse, his yes, wife. Yes. And he was in idolatry by being a weak, weak wussy. Yeah. A spineless man. Yeah. Who pushed his wife in front of him to lead for him. Mm -hmm. That's the opposite uh, or the counterpart for the man. Yeah. Is to make his wife or a potential spouse mm -hmm. his rescuer. Well, she's with that mindset, she's going to struggle with not having a man to lead yeah. and to make to lead well and to make decisions. And so she's going to be have a very strong inclination or temptation to step up to the plate and do what needs to be done because mm -hmm. it's got to be done. And so that's the counterpart. So what is the answer to this? My off the cuff response to that is, first of all, to recognize that 100 percent of us humans on Earth. Mm -hmm. don't know what we don't know right and to recognize and admit that requires humility yeah and here is a prayer that i am fully convinced that god answers every single time without mm -hmm. fail mm -hmm. every single time i have ever prayed to the lord to humble me or to give me more humility you give me wisdom. He, and also wisdom he always answers that he always answers the the cry, the true heartfelt cry for more humility and more mm -hmm. wisdom. Yeah. And so uh, uh, ask him to reveal the things that you need to humble yourself in. Guess what? The Lord is more eager for for you to humble yourself than you are to be humbled. Mm -hmm. And it can yeah. be painful, but it doesn't have to be. Yeah. I have recognized that if I choose ahead of time to have nothing to defend, nothing to hide, mm -hmm. and pursue and choose humility ahead of time. Mm -hmm. It's not painful to let things go because yeah. I've already released it. Yeah. So that my that would be my final closing thought. That's good. We'll end at that. Hopefully this was helpful. Give us some comments below. Let us know if it spoke to you. Was it, you know, what message you got out of it? We would like to know. Yep. Like, subscribe, share, comment. Mm -hmm. Till next time. Yes. Be blessed. We'll see you.